Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Michael Bach from Toronto. Hi, Michael, how are you doing? I'm great, Meher. Great to be here. Thank you for being here. So Michael is best-selling author and thought leader and subject matter expert in the areas of inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility. And he's the founder and former CEO of the Canadian Center of Diversity and Inclusion and CCDI Consulting, dedicated, accomplished, global IDA professional with expertise in developing, implementing, and managing strategic initiatives that strengthens the workforce diversity of global organization. So let's start from there. So diversity and uh, inclusion is a hot topic. Sometimes it feels that it's like it's just a checkbox. We hired the gay, we hired the black, we have we are diverse, the numbers are good, everyone is hip, happy, we're celebrating gay pride, everyone is putting the colors and everything. But what is the reality? What's happening and why it is important for employers and why it's important for, especially for job seeker that, that wants kind of a belonging and connection to the organization? Well, that's a lot in there. The I think the most important piece is the why question. Why really does this matter? Because if mm -hmm. it's just because it's the right thing to do, then employers are not going to pay attention for very long. They'll have a short attention span. Yeah. Why it matters, I, I go back to uh, a report by a guy called Rick Miner, mm -hmm. and I think it was 2010 or 2014, I'm getting my year wrong. Anyway, he, he predicted that we would get to a point where we would have more people who were over the age of 65 or under the age of 16, so not working, not paying taxes, mm -hmm. and we would have a significant gap. And what that would lead to is essentially a crumbling economy mm. where um, we wouldn't have enough money going into taxes, which, meant, which means that our school systems would fail, our healthcare would fail, our roads would fail. Mm -hmm. And his solution was a focus on people who have been traditionally underemployed and unemployed. Those being women, people of color, um, uh, religious minorities, immigrants, young people, two SLGBTQI plus folks, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All the people that the whole diversity conversation aims to help. And the reality is we're there. Yeah. N not that we're at that tipping point around employment yet with, uh, with the retirement, but where we are is record low low unemployment yeah. in canada it's just over five percent in in the united states it's below four percent and employers are struggling to find people yes. we're at a point where employers cannot afford to turn anyone away they have to take advantage of every talent that walks through the door regardless of what that person looks like or believes and and so that's why it matters. Employers are not in a position to turn away talent. It is uh, more than just a tick box exercise. It's not just attracting the diversity. That's the easy part. Yes. The hard part is keeping them. Yes. The hard part is the inclusion. Yes. And making sure that people can come to work and be successful and not experience any form of discrimination within your workplace. Yeah. But let's say if someone, an organization hires, let's say a gay person or hires a black person, but there is no someone similar to them in the leadership roles. Mm -hmm. So how that can that person can belong or can get connected with others? Well, I think there's a big difference between feeling like they belong in an organization and seeing themselves in leadership. Mm -hmm. I think the, the leadership piece is really important but that's something that is going to take time and a, a a a significant level of deliberate action. Yes. Where um you can't simply hope yeah that leadership is going to change. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um if it was it would have happened long ago. Yeah. So um in terms of the leadership it requires deliberate action it requires a 
a, a very well thought out um, uh, high performance pro uh, professional development plan. So you are looking at employees and saying, okay, what skills do I need this person to have to take yeah. the, the next step in their career? Mm -hmm. um, it, conversely, though, it's, I think it's really important to talk about being the only person. Yeah. Being the only person who's black or 2SLGBTQI plus or, or, or. Yeah. And so it's important that employers make sure that they are not only just hiring the one black person or the one gay person or the one immigrant, mm -hmm. but they're hiring lots of different people from different backgrounds and then focusing on the inclusion. Yes. I get asked the question all the time, like what comes first, the diversity and the inclusion. And I always say it's the inclusion. You want the inclusion to come first because yes. you need to make sure that your environment is one where mm. those people are going to feel welcome, that yeah. they're going to feel included. You yeah. know, so if I'm a trans woman, a woman and I go to work for your organization. And the first thing that happens to me is someone yells at me for being in what they think is the wrong bathroom. Yeah. You failed because I'm out. I'm not going to stick around. Yes. Um, and so you have to make sure that the environment is inclusive first. Yeah. Thank you for those great tips, Michael. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Michael a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis, kind of a journey with us. You can like, share all the videos. So tune in next time for another great question with Michael.